Hello there, welcome to an episode of Armored Warfare Caribbean Crisis with Ungainly Titan. So, Caribbean Crisis seems to be what Armored Warfare calls itself on the console, and over the weekend I decided to actually have a look at Armored Warfare. I was going to go back and have another look at World of Warships or World of Warplanes or both, or maybe even World of Tanks on the PC, and I was downloading them and started updating, and then I thought, hang on, Armored Warfare is on the uh, console. Why don't I have a look at it? So I downloaded that as well. It's, uh, well, the downloads is completed over the Sunday, but the upload, today's upload, Monday's upload, um, it's now actually Tuesday. Monday has passed. Uh, Monday, Monday's upload took until 2 o'clock, I think, to upload. Uh, so I couldn't play Armored Warfare in the morning. So I only had about an hour in the afternoon because I had to actually go to a funeral and I had a brief look there for Armored Warfare and it goes straight into basically advertising um, trying to sell you stuff it looks like well I'm not sure what this daily challenges thing is I can obviously apparently dismiss the daily challenge do I get a different one every day do they stay there until I complete them I have no idea anyway nothing's explained I had to figure out the control schema by looking into the options, settings, and um, looking at the control schema there. So you have a garage. You start out with an M41 Walker Bulldog, a PT-76, and a Type 62. Not sure about the P I'm not sure if the PT-76 is in the other world of tanks, but the, the M41 and the Type 62 both are. You have battle modes that... Operation PVE and vehicle testing area. Vehicle testing area is just a track with some static tank tanks that you can shoot at and you just drive the tank around. I really don't see the benefit. Um, maybe if you knew a little bit more about the game and how the various uh, icon icons and stuff on the screen, and you could understand what the screen is telling you, uh, that the test vehicle track could be of some use in evaluating a tank or a particular gun or ammunition or something like that because a lot a, there seems to be a strong emphasis in armored warfare on knowing what type of ammunition to use under what circumstances um Identify. so you load in you have um, same as you would on the play versus in, um, environment so if your mini map on the right you have a tank outline Gives you your speed. You have cruise control uh, up the, the the three boxes above the speed. Our cruise control options. You get your reload. You have a bunch of icons down the right hand side of that box, and I have no idea what they, what they do. Um, what is that eye thing telling me that I'm spotted? You have my ammunition types, so I have two ammunition types, the one that's selected at the moment is heat and the other one seems to be a Sabo discarding ammunition type. Um, you have the option of firing smoke, which is the X button. Y cycles between the ammunition types and right bumper reloads. Left bumper is the auto aim or auto lock. Um, I have Cause that's caused a fair bit of confusion in the next segment of this video I where I actually go into a oh, versus okay. environment segment. Um, I didn't really learn anything by driving around the vehicle test area. I had to figure out my, um, what do you call it, my, um, keep my control layout by actually going into the um, settings. I've just noticed there's potentially a different um, set of control schema for wheeled vehicles, but anyway, you have toggle optics, so left trigger okay, goes into telescope mode, I think. Right trigger is fire, right bumper is a reload, left bumper is lock on target. Move is obviously the move, turn is the turn, cruise control is click. Uh, Use repair kit. The D pad is used. Radio commands. Use med kit. Uh, right thumbstick is um, move camera and cycle zoom. A is the handbrake. 
Picks the small grenades and Y cycles ammo type. And that seems to be it. I suspect the team sizes are different for different missions, but this seems to be the only mission you have at the start. Um, I have a relatively small number of players. And you're against the environment, you're against AI um, tanks. As far as I know, this seems to be the way it works. There's a definite difference in the feel of the tanks handling depending on the terrain you're on. It just seems to handle a little bit better on the hard ground than on the soft ground. It's kind of realistic. The other thing I would say is that it doesn't appear to be going, like, you don't seem to be going as fast. You seem to, I don't know, seem to more control than you would over the tank in World of Tanks. You have three levels of cruise control as you can see there above the kilometer an hour, but I'm going 30 kilometers an hour. And I'm not too sure what, but 30 kilometers an hour, everything feels a bit more rushed in World of Tanks, but I'm not too sure why that, what, what that is. One of the things I notice here is that the tanks and the, the AI tanks seem to go down pretty easily. Uh, I mean, it's the same ammunition I'm using. But they seem to go down a lot easier here in this version than they are in the actual um, training training ground routine thing. However, I'm definitely going to have to get my, um, my hands on some tutorials on YouTube or something like that just to direct me around the screen and what's going on and how to play this game uh, that just seems to be lacking all right i mean yes you can go in and you can faff about but you are every every bit as dull as you would have been in played world of tanks and more so even because at least world of tanks is a basic driving tutorial lots of basic things that i don't know how do i know i'm spotted yes i seem to be spotted now am i unspotted yes there is a nice thing popping up there all right that probably means that i'm spotted didn't even notice that when I was playing, uh, just the value of actually watching a replay. So I could probably figure it out by just what, playing the game and watching my replays and just looking around at the screen and see what it does, but it might be easier if I found somebody on the internet to actually tell me what's, what's, um, what's going on. So it is a very different game. It feels different, it plays different. Um, I don't know what it's like receiving damage. I mean, I seem to have a thousand odd hit points. I've been shot at least once. And I think I got shot once more there. See, there's another difference in the game there between that obstacle. If I hit that rock in World of Tanks, I'd probably tip over. Uh, I would climb it, and I would tip over. And this thing, it doesn't. It just bounces off it because it won't climb it. It's too steep, too, too abrupt for the tracks to mount it. Um, so we got around into him. Spotting icon has appeared. He's been shot. Don't know if it was by me. Well, I got one shot in, I think, but I don't know if it penetrated. Um, Protect the plane. We've accessed the hard drive. I presume the blue bars is the actual health bars of the various people. So it looks like most people on the team weren't shot, except the squ squad leader five five seven three. He seems to have taken a right battering. So we've taken over the objective, and um, a few more tanks appear. Yeah, definitely could do with pop smoke again. I like the smoke. I like the idea that you can pop smoke. I don't know how effective popping smoke is. Um, But I certainly like the idea of popping smoke. It doesn't seem to last too very long either. Um, Thanks, what, a second or two? No but I suppose it'd be enough to maybe to obscure you or make it difficult to hit a weak spot um, in an emergency. I know I was was asked in a developer stream of World of Tanks about smoke, but they didn't uh, bring it in. Now, the other thing I was saying was that I was... The load screens are quite long. Now, I don't know whether this is because of the amount of communication it does with the servers when you're uh, going through the various stages. So you're loading out of the game, you're loading into the garage, you're loading from the garage back into the game. Oh, and therefore it was my ISP was at fault. I also lost the connection a few times. And again, I don't know if that was an ISP thing. 
because I didn't actually have a general loss of connection. I mean, I didn't lose Xbox Live. I didn't. The other computers didn't uh, lose anything. All the downloads and all the uploads and all that sort of stuff kept going. So, again, I don't know whether this is a stability issue in the game or whether it's um, my ISP. It could just as easily be my ISP. It's too early to uh, accuse the game of anything yet. So you get into the screen. It looks like I'm most of the way to approximate matches left. One more. I did actually have one more match, um, so I'm probably done on that particular renowned status progress to 1200, whatever. Um, you get a summary screen, which has got a lot of little complex icons. You can actually scroll through them, I discovered. But I didn't know how to do it when I was doing this bit, so I spotted four, killed two, and assisted on two. Assisted, I did damage, I presume. Uh, I got thousand somethings and five thousand something else's. You have separate crew members. Uh, it looks like it's independent crew members with independent skills. So presumably the crews can then train up in various tricks and perks and what have you. As they train up, um, again I don't know. Um, and then I got disconnected from the server. So my first impression, well, it didn't feel as exciting as World of Tanks. Um, it seemed to be a bit slower paced, a bit calmer. But I don't know whether that's because I have World of Tanks experience and I came in and played it. It's definitely quite confusing, there's a lot, lot of stuff going on and it's not explained very well, or at all really. Um, would need to look up some stuff and see how the actual game is supposed to be played. Missions seem to be quite short, but I don't know if that's a general feature of the missions or it's just a specific feature of the first mission. And the customization, well that looks like there's a lot of customization involved and I don't know whether a lot of that is just additional tech that you can bolt onto the tanks or how the tech tree or how the whole thing actually works or hangs together that side of the game. Um game looks lovely. I mean, I can't complain about that side of it. So, um, overall, that's interesting. I'll definitely have a further look at this. But it didn't grab me the way War Tanks grabbed me the first time I played it. That, that I can say. Um, so anyway, I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please give it a like. And uh, if you've not already done so, please give the channel a subscription. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you again soon. Bye for now.